How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Elvis Junction Reviews. Today, we're looking at another Atherin Genesis product. We're looking at an Atherin Genesis Web Asset Management SD60M Triclops number 6022. This is an XUP2158. And as you can see, it's prime for grime and also has sound in it. So there will be a sound demo in this video. Let's get it out of its box here. Starting off here, we have a diesel locomotive operator's manual and the sound guide. So we will be looking at that later. We have a exploded diagram of the locomotive here. Here it is, all nice and lots of parts. And on the back is a part list. So if you break a piece, you can uh, order it from their website directly. And then we have a sign up for Ather News and some information about Horizon Hobbies uh, warranty on this piece of paper right here. Underneath this piece of foam sheet is the locomotive safely in its plastic case right there. So let's go ahead and open it up. Slide it out of the box here. There's a piece of piece of foam right here. Yeah, let's oof, open it up out of here. And there comes the lid right back. And let's pull the locomotive out. Move the clamshell out of the way. And now we have to get this foam out of here. There we go. There we go. All right. So now let's get into some history. So because I've already reviewed three other SD60 variants, I'm not going to go into too much history, but I will say that the SD6, the EMD SD60 was the successor to the fairly failed SD50. Now the SD60 was a lot more successful than the SD50. It had better electronics, better engine. It didn't break its crankshafts. Um, unfortunately, it did not sell as in as many as, say, the SD40-2, and that was because when the SD60 was released, it was competing with General Electric's Dash 8s, and the Dash 8s were very pro uh, very uh, popular and very reliable. Um, in the end, several variants of the SD60 were made, like the SD60i, the SD60M, the SD60F, and then the SD60M2 uh, here, the aka the Triclops because it has three windows. And uh, this was a UP locomotive at one point, but then it was retired and it became a web asset unit locomotive as we see here now. All right, so now let's get into some details starting with the front. All right, so we're currently looking at the front of the locomotive and we're gonna start our way from the top and work our way down to the bottom as we always do. Starting at the top here, you can see a grab iron just on the top of the forehead of the locomotive. We have two grab irons that extend the width of the locomotive's forehead right here and right here. We have a three-piece window because this is known as the Triclops variant because of those three windows. We have separately applied windshield wipers on each window. Moving down here to the nose of the locomotive, we have some grab irons, one right here, one right here, and one right here. You can't see them, but they are right here. We have two sand filler hatches, one right here and one right here. You can just barely see them. Here on the nose, we have our number boards, which do light up when the locomotive is in motion, I believe. We have our headlight right here, which does light up when the locomotive is in motion. We have some grab irons that work their way from the top of the nose down to the walkway. Here is a faded out a UP shield, and here is the door. Working our way here is the walkway, and there are the handrails and a safety chain. Here is the anti-climber right here. We have our low-mounted digital lights, I like, which I like. I like low-mounted digital lights. We have our coupler cup bar, some more hand, some more grab irons on the top of the plow, some MU hoses, three on either side of the plow, our air brake hose, our coupler, and there is our snow plow. It just all looks very nice, very, very lovely detailed, and some oh, some like compartments right here. All right, so now let's look at the rear. Okie dokie, so now we're looking at the rear of the locomotive. Starting at the top here, we have a sand filler hatch right here, and you can just see some uh, lift rings right here. There is a grab iron behind these lift rings, but unfortunately we can't see them now. You will see that when we look at the roof. We have some grab irons that work their way from the top and work their way down to the bottom to the walkway here. We have some old class light um, outlines right here. Here are some number boards right here. There's our rear headlight. Our anti-climber right here with our walkway. There is the, that is the walkway light. We have some, we have our coupler cup bar right here, an MU hose, our coupler, some spare knuckles right here, and some MU hoses, three on either side, and there's our air brake hose. All right, so now let's look, get into our side detail. 
Looking at our side detail here on the conductor's side, this locomotive is primed for grime, so it is faded, so that's a lot more easily, it's more easy to weather. Anyway, we have another um, faded out UP shield right here. We have an, an F to indicate this is the front of the locomotive. Here's our phenomenal truck deal detail, as you can see, and this locomotive does have rotating roller end caps, some electrical boxes right here, WAMX 6022, Web Asset Management uh, Company right here. You can see all the nice detail inside the cap here, even though it is a little blurred. Here's our sunshade, and here is, here's a speed indicator right here. We have an electric bell. Here is some a sand filler hose, or sorry, a sand hose. Moving along here, we have our blower just right here. Here is our nicely fuel tank, and you can see we have some nice markings for the fuel indicator and the fuel pump. Here is the air brake reservoir. Now, as you can see, Union Pacific has been patched out, and there's a lot of gray and dark grays around uh, the side of the locomotive here. Moving along here, we have our radiator section. So we have some radiator grills right here, and our uh, more truck detail, and as you see, there are the rotating roller end caps. On the other side, it's pretty much the same, minus the, uh, the blower on that side, and the fact that this is the side that, um, if you're coming in from the rear of the locomotive and you're gonna walk that way into the cab, the door is right there. As you can see, we're just moving the locomotive along right here, more of the grayed out Union Pacific logo. And there is a window into that little compartment, and here is our brake wheel, and another patched out part right here. All right, so now let's look at the roof detail. Looking at the roof detail, first of all, here are those sand filler hatches that I did mention earlier. We have a PTC antenna array, and right below, behind that is the dynamic brake fan. And here is our, and you can see right here is our dust catcher right here, and there's our exhaust. In fact, the roof does come off of the cab, so let me see if I can actually yank this sucker off without breaking anything. There it is. It's held in by magnets. You can see the magnets are right there. And now we can actually look at the incredible detail inside the actual cab. And you can see some wires that lead down to the uh, to the headlights and all that. And as you see there's three three seats back there. And there's controls right here for the uh, engineer and the conductor's desk. And you can see it actually does lead down there. Whoopsies. All right, let's put the locomotive down. Let's put the cab back on. You can actually get a better look at the cab right here and the PTC antenna array. Let's go ahead and... Slide that sucker in. There we go. Moving along the the long hood here. There is our there is our horn right here, and there are the there are the radiator fans and that uh, grab iron I did mention earlier. All right, so now let's get into my. Uh, sorry, let's get into the sound demo. All right, so now we have our locomotive here on the test track. So let's get the uh, power into the uh, locomotive here first. Hold on a second. You can see the ground lights are already on. All right, so let's turn on the headlight there, and you can see there it is on. Turn on the ditch lights. And uh, here's our bell. Yeah. Kind of loud, for my ears that is. And now let's turn on the horn. This is gonna be loud for me. It might be loud in the recording, but we'll see. making my ears ring. It actually is hurting my ears. And I do not like that. Alright, so now let's move it out a little bit here. The ground lights are still on. And what's actually very fascinating is actually I'm going to bring the locomotive back to show that. Bring the ground lights back here. You can see that flickering. So that flickering is, um, that's just from the video itself, because that is the frame rate catching the, that's a frame rate right there, showing that the blinking is, well, that's a result of the frames. It is not, it is not actually blinking in my, on my, in my eyes, so don't worry about it, so that light is not broken. Let's actually reverse it more.
Now you see the ditch lights come on when the locomotive is flowing forward. Let's get into my final thoughts. In terms of this, this locomotive actually, I'm gonna have to give it a rating of an A plus. I didn't find anything wrong with it. It has great sound, it has great detail. I love that prime for grime. And I love that it, all that, just I love all these blocked out message um, parts that like indicate that this was once a UP locomotive. Um, I got this on Lombard Hobbies for around, I think, over $300, I'm correct. But this is a Genesis 2.0 locomotive, so it does make sense. This is, um, if you re recall, they Athen did put out um, an, a, a previous line of ST60 Triclopses. However, they had to recall a lot of them because of a um, a wheel issue here in the uh, the center wheel kept lifting off the rails and it was derailing everything. When it was like going over switches and curves so they did so basically this was this is the response to that failure of a run almost like the sd50 and the sd60 situation but anyway if you enjoyed please hit that like button also subscribe if you've not and hit the notification bell to know when i upload um i upload on wednesday wednesdays at 9 a.m so uh check in at those at that on those days and at that time but anyway thank you very much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video bye for now